Hey everybody, it's Narina, respiratory therapist at Lofta. We've been getting lots of questions on what obstructive sleep apnea is. So today we're going to be covering the ins and outs of sleep apnea and the treatment solutions. Let's get started. If you have a concern that you or your loved one may be suffering from sleep apnea, please go ahead and click on the link below. That'll go ahead and provide you with some insight into our home sleep study available at Lofta. It's one night use, disposable, and super easy to use, and it gets you right on track for better sleep. So sleep apnea is when we stop breathing at night because our airways collapsed. Your heart rate's going to increase, your brain's gonna force you to wake up and breathe. Wake up. Hey, hello. And as a result, you're gonna wake up super sleepy in the morning. That's usually the general outcome. So we saturate all the blood in our body with oxygen that we breathe. If we're no longer breathing because our airway has collapsed, then our oxygen levels start to drop. When your oxygen levels drop, it causes your heart rate to increase because your heart and your lungs, they're kind of like best friends. So they're working together as a team. If your lungs aren't breathing in fresh new oxygen, your heart is gonna be forced to work harder to bring all the existing oxygen moving to all your vital organs head to toe. After some time, your brain will finally say, hey, you have to wake up and take a breath. This doesn't always mean that you're woken up to a full awareness and you're gasping for air, even though this is the case for lots of people. What can sometimes occur in most cases is that you'll go from a really deep restorative sleep stage back into a lighter sleep stage. For some people, this can happen several hundreds of times throughout the night without them even knowing. So that's why you can run into symptoms like headache, fatigue, uh, daytime sleepiness, and other things that can occur. <laughs> and other things that can occur. What are some signs for sleep apnea? Some of those signs include snoring, gasping, choking, chronic fatigue, morning headaches, frequent restroom usage, and rapid heart rate upon awakening. You gotta be kidding me. Everything you just said is my favorite thing to do every day. So there are two types of sleep apnea. The most commonly known is going to be obstructive sleep apnea. This is when there's either an anatomical blockage, like the airway closing in on itself, your tongue rolling back and blocking the airway, or even things like a deviated septum could cause this to occur. This uh, obstructive sleep apnea is going to be more common in men and in older people. However, it doesn't discriminate. Sleep apnea can occur in young, healthy adults. It can truly depend on, again, anatomical things, genetic predisposition like receding jaw, etc. <laughs> Do you say etc. in real life or is that only something that you write in notes? Now the second type of sleep apnea is that is less common would be central sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea derives from your central nervous system or your brain. This is usually when your brain doesn't send the proper breathing signals to your lungs to take a breath. As a result, instead of gasping for air or not being able to breathe even though you're making an effort, with central sleep apnea, you don't make any effort to breathe for 10 seconds or longer because your brain never sent that signal to your lungs to do so. Signal. Signal to your lungs to do so. In more common cases, centrals can occur due to underlying heart or neurological issues and certain medications such as central nervous system depressants. The most common ones that we usually hear of are Valium or Ambien. So how to treat your sleep apnea can differ. The gold standard of treatment is going to be PAP therapy, positive airway pressure, which is what we specialize with at Lofta. Pressurized air is there to simply stent the airway open to allow for the airway to not collapse at night. This means that you're going to be breathing comfortably and normally, just like you would when you're awake. The other type of treatment would be positional therapy, and this would be indicated again by a physician based on your sleep study results. If you have a higher amount of events on your back or on your side versus your other sleep positions, you may be recommended for positional therapy in which you would be told to sleep on certain sides to avoid having apneic events. CPAP therapy and positional therapy are both available at Lofta. 
This is only clinically indicated for mild to moderate cases of sleep apnea. This is essentially a mouth guard that's going to push your jaw forward to allow the airway some more room to stay open throughout the night, which is why it doesn't usually cure severe cases of sleep apnea because it's just so severe that even moving the, um, the jaw forward won't really do the trick. Weight is one of the leading factors in uh, causing obstructive sleep apnea. So by losing weight, you may be able to either completely cure your sleep apnea or at least reduce the severity. Surgery is also one of the last resorts in most cases due to the fact that it's more invasive and requires recovery time. Surgery would be something that you'd have to see your physician about and is only indicated for certain anatomical obstructions. Thank you guys so much for listening today. If you have any questions, you know where to find us. Thanks so much. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye. I said bye. I said bye like I'm on the phone. Okay. Do you think that was okay? We good? We good? Should I do it again? <laughs>